Ah, good old Napoleon. Um, there is a Waterloo anniversary coming up really soon, so, well, I'll be streaming this recording. So, yeah, for everyone who is watching, this is pre recorded. Um, um, so, yeah, it will be streamed on Waterloo anniversary, so I thought I would go over my old replays, although I don't have that many of them because um, about half a year ago, no, a year ago almost, uh, my PC died, namely my hard drive, and alongside with the Windows that was installed on that hard drive, also all the all Napoleon replays um, went down. So this, uh, these are the only ones I have preserved. Um, because I've sent them uh, for emails to other people. So yeah, it's, this is the only thing I have salvaged from the hard drive failure. Anyway, since it's a Waterloo anniversary, Waterloo, let me find... There we go, really well played Waterloo 2v2. And for those who are maybe not familiar with Napoleonic War, uh, because I don't know, maybe I'll send those these recordings to other people. You know, I will be trying to introduce you to concepts found in Napoleonic War multiplayer, like basic tactics, maneuvers, stuff like that. So. Um, opponent of the War, sadly, is the only, well not the only, the last uh, Total War mo uh, game which allows you to play historical battles in multiplayer. Ever since Shogun 2, that is not the thing. Which is sad to see them going to regress, really. So, I am here playing as Michel Ney. And the tactic here is basically to rush our forces forward as quickly as possible, to not allow the British, and especially Prussians, to prepare for a defense. So, I've eliminated one artillery unit, because if I don't eliminate it, then they can use grape shot against me as I approach up the hill, and grape shots are devastating. I found a charge into... what is it? Blackwatch. Oh, dealt some decent damage, 24 casualties, not that bad. Now going over to Wellington and Light Infantry. Light Infantry obviously cannot defend against cavalry. Although the charge angle wasn't really that good, so casualties are really minor. In the meantime, there we go. Wellington is dead, which will help us a lot with routing British units. Continuing our charge, I'm getting another uh, artillery of the of the game. Meanwhile, my Napoleon ally is also pushing into the buildings, and uh, I could say that he's maybe not that good because he should be way more aggressive with old guard but at least he is attacking so I'll give him that and I have no idea who that is because in scenario battles um, player names are replaced with um, you know the characters you are playing as so I will be sure I um, will show up as Michel May he'll show up as Napoleon Bonaparte etc uh, well I can check who I was playing as by pressing space and See highlights on my units. These grenadiers are trying to get into the house, but the light infantry decided to go out, and the grenadiers are now fighting them outside of the house. I don't know if this is really preferable, but this should give the house to France for free now. Although I have failed to kill this cavalry, well, uh, artillery, but anyway, really. Uh, as long as I take out just one of them, that's a success. The second one is a, is a bonus. And this one should be taken out by Napoleon himself. He has a cavalry force. Uh, apparently he's already died. So, now I need to wait, because as Michel Ney, I have only two infantry units. 
Uh, at the moment, we have them both inside the house, um, resting them basically since they run across uh, the battlefield. But it's still considered muddy in here, so units are getting tired very, very quickly as they run across. Uh, so, my Napoleon ally. Victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Yeah, uh, that's not really true. It's just because uh, obviously the wing matter, as we call it, doesn't take um, what is it terrain into account, which obviously is massively in favor of the British and Prussian alliance. So we've taken all the houses as French, continuing our artillery bombardment, which is basically rendered useless by out, uh, by the British forces pulling back. It's also a nice maneuver because, I mean, it's hard to execute, but it's um, if executed well, it's really good. So it forces us to climb up the hill, and uh, once we climb the hill, they just shoot us, and they have that huge advantage of the first shot, uh, which you normally also have. But here, we can uh, take it from a much closer range. The disadvantage here is though that if you fuck up, like I think this infantry is about to do, this is going to happen. You are going to shoot the ground and actually give the first shot advantage potentially to French forces because you are now stuck reloading and French forces are approaching and about to shoot you. But I see this Napoleon guy decides to attack in melee. It's quite a bold move considering he has quite an advantage here. Um, considering he yeah, has young guard, going this is the line, old guards, all elite units. Here come my cuirassiers, ready to back up that advance on top of that hill. My units still here uh, in the house, inside they are not resting. Uh, yeah, I think there's um, some kind of a bug that you need to mitigate and I just maybe forgot. Maybe they're just resting very slowly. Lifeguards found here, probably a unit we've killed, um, made around earlier. Sir, uh, we are about to kill. Sir, our general is under attack. No, it is my general that is attacking, there is a difference. So, uh, now British forces are using the standard Napoleon tactic, I mean, Napoleon's war tactic, which is charge your cavalry, force enemy line infantry into the square formation, which is much weaker when it comes to gunfight and just shoot it to pieces. I did the same, although I am attacking a light infantry which doesn't have access to um, <clears throat> a square formation, nor does it have bayonets, which are really good against cavalry. So yeah, light infantry is really, really vulnerable to cavalry. And that's why we see two of them routed. routed. Third one still holding out, but the morale is devastated. And I just continue my charge, forcing the enemy line infantry into the square formations, which are, as I said, much more vulnerable to gunfire. I managed to take a final artillery piece, artillery unit of the British forces, which was quite an issue because great shot at such a close range, they're absolutely, absolutely devastating. We have one Corsair unit in the background, and you just need to know that cavalry isn't really made in this game to kill, it's more to cause trouble to the enemy, force them into those square formations and allow infantry to do their killing job. And I have finally went out of the house, ready to block the Prussian forces which are exhausted, after all they have run all the way here, to reinforce British forces as soon as possible. And now we can see Prussian cavalry doing the same thing as, as we are trying to do with the British. I'm charging the infantry head on, it's forming a square, pretty standard thing. Though my Napoleon French ally isn't really going to squares, and that old guard is going to suffer for it. Because if you don't uh, form a square, then you are taking a full impact of cavalry charge, which is something that you never want to do. So. Going a square is more vulnerable to gunfire, but it's still the lesser of two evils. If you're getting charged by cavalry, it's better to take the charge uh, in the square formation and suffer potential uh, gunfire. As you can see, my cavalry is not being entirely focused, but it's two neighboring infantry uh, units. Old guard actually 
possibly finishing my unit. Here, it doesn't really matter, friendly fire is a thing, and it is a good thing if utilized correctly. And cavalry isn't really made to kill anyway. So here I sent one of my fusiliers the line to support the Napoleon player, since he's quite weak, although he still has a full unit of old guard in reserves, which is now about to push to the British forces, possibly to deal that final blow, which you need to deal very quickly or as soon as possible, because Russians have five units of infantry approaching that are being delayed by only one infantry unit of mine. Though British forces are crumbling slowly, they still have support of Russian dragoons and are kinding a little bit. They're buying time for the Prussian uh, allies to come to them and these grenadiers are being sent, although they are running very very slowly. You can see the exhaustion and possibly unfavorable terrain. You need to remember that it was raining uh, the morning uh, before the Battle of Waterloo, or well, it was just the previous day. Anyway. It's all very very muddy in here, though you maybe cannot really see it here in the game. But the effects of the terrain are still there. This old guard is really caught in a really weird maneuver. Uh, although the next old guard unit is coming up full strength. Also, old guard is the only unit in the game that applies fear to the enemy. You can see if you hover over. Uh, it's a steady, fresh, concerned, frightening enemy unit. It is uh, the old guard that's applying that fright, which is like minus one morale, but it's always there. And manipulating morale is what distinguishes um, good players from bad players. Well, one of many things, obviously. The experienced Napoleon players will be able to tell at a glance of when an, a unit is going to break. So you can see, oh, this guy has liberal morale, I know the, the effects I have applied, like presence of the old guard, uh, flanking, general's death, also general, if you route the general, um, and he, he doesn't die, but routes um, off the battlefield completely, then the penalty is also applied for some time, it's like a recent uh, general flight or something. British for still kiting, Grenadiers the line are fighting against the Black Watch. Both very good units in melee, especially the Black Watch. You see some really nice melee animations in here actually. And despite the game being based in gunfire, they have done the job pretty well. Black Watch now retreating despite having yeah, uh, so the fuzzy is the line. So they said, okay, we've fought enough. Okay, although the Black Watch still has a chance to recover. Although it's running straight in front of this fuzzy is the line. So you take a volley into the face, uh, and they probably will be shattered. Uh, I think that is about to happen. Let's see. Also, you can see in the background, British forces taking control of the house. Come on, shoot them. I need to reload. Fair enough. Here you can see the Black Witch dying, and there it goes, shattered. In the meantime, Landwehr, which is a militia unit, is being committed as essentially a mid shield. A very good tactic, actually, because if you just let them shoot, they're not going to inflict many casualties. But if you charge them, they act as a mid shield for your allied units which can deal much more damage in a gunfight and uh, you're distracting the enemy, charging him, um, not allowing the enemy to shoot. So a very good move inside of the Prussian player. As you can see I need to pull back my fuzzies the line as they have suffered quite a lot of casualties and they were in a 2v1 fight. I'm putting them back into formation to make it more into a 2v2 also sending my general Michel Ney, which is actually a unit of heavy cavalry, it is kind of a unique general. So yeah, he acts as a heavy cavalry, which is much stronger than a regular um, general staff unit. 
like that one of Napoleon's, for example. Which I think at this spawned... No, it's okay. There we go. Taking some casualties, he supported his advance for the time being. Uh, yeah, since we don't have any regular cavalry units, we need to use our generals to possibly break the British formation. As you can see, there's some foot units, Dutch Line Infantry as well, that are below half man count. So if you can only force them into a square and make uh, Fuzzy's line and all guard put a wall into them, they should probably break quite soon. If you look at the wind meter, it's still really, really close. Pretty much can go either way. Our Prussian forces, they are using their full units of musketeers to try to prevent Michel May uh, from attacking from behind. But since cavalry is much, much faster and this synth is exhausted, although Michel May is also very tired after running around for so long. I'm just waiting for a perfect opening to strike, and I absolutely cannot allow Michel May to die. If he dies, my line crumbles. And after that, even while well, now one of the old guard units is retreating, so we have only one old guard left. So if my line crumbles, these two remaining units of Napoleon forces will be vastly, vastly outnumbered. And as you can see, I have already run out of ammunition, so they're after fighting the British and now the Prussians. Russians do not have that problem, so I am forced here to charge my unit in. This is the only way they can be useful now. I see Grenadier's the line being broken and Michel May charging in, forcing this unit into a square. Forcing this unit into a square. So, okay, I've done my job. Two squares forced. I'm out. This unit is routed. This unit is about to be broken as well. Um, I think this is a bug because, well, this hub is destroyed. 100% and yet some rifles are still inside. Uh, there are only 22, so not a big deal. I wonder if the unit can enter the house or not. Could it potentially render this unit immortal. Hard to tell. And the musketeers that are trying to prevent Michel from ready, charging sir. the back are facing off against my Fuzzy's the line. Both units probably exhausted, very tired is exhausted. And there we go, an artillery Barrage, sniping, get cover militia, dealing a huge blow to Prussian morale. And my and I actually found a charge into musketeers without them forming a square. It's really good for me. I still can't really risk the death of Michel Ney, although I see his morale going down. It's like, okay, if I continue this, they should break really soon. And there it goes. This is the last Prussian unit. Oh, not counting the artillery. There was a British unit and the chain route is in the effect. And the French forces have won, turned the tide of history by not suiciding their calf mindlessly, just suiciding their calf with a purpose. And with the support of infantry, obviously, which is like this one of the stupidest military decisions in the history of warfare. It's it's like you're France's most one of the most renowned marshals and need to make such a fundamental mistake as attacking of committing cavalry without infantry support. You never do that. I mean Michel Ney fought that British way of treating, but holy crap, he fell for the Oh, a pretty obvious trap and even if it wasn't a trap and they were actually retreating you should still not do something like that so it would be very very rude for British to retreat so early into the battle and anyway as you can see both my fuzzle is the line dealing almost 300 casualties this is pretty much three units worth of kills so they have definitely done their job as for cavalry kills, obviously not that much, but as I said, it is about uh, forcing those squares and possibly you know, killing a general, which I did, uh, destroying artillery units and just disrupting the enemy formation, causing chaos that then your infantry can capitalize on. Okay, that is 
Oh, I think my favorite 2v2 Waterloo because it was played really really well from all sides. Um, I mean there were some mistakes obviously, uh, in general the skill level was pretty high uh, across the board so those battles always are will have a special place in my heart rather than just rushing some noobs even though if you play like flawlessly no mistakes everything clicks you manage to you know execute that strategy you were thinking about perfectly it's still better if the enemy does the same and gives you a really really um, good battle gives you a run for your money so that was Waterloo 2v2 uh, thank you for watching if you're watching it uh, as a regular episode you're watching it as a twitch stream um, I'll see another battle